Hi all and welcome back to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you're new, I'm ASB. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories with autism, mental health, tips and advice along with fun and games and many more to come. So if you're into any of these, feel free to smash the subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner and turn on the notification bell so don't miss future updates or videos from me when I upload. So as we know, Greek myths, they tend to basically drive us crazy, doesn't it? And at this point of time, I know that sometimes that some of these myths that I'm going to bring to you, basically, that it makes our grieving process much more difficult. And hopefully we can debunk some of the myths and so on and so forth so that we can just get a better understanding because that's what I'm here for. Um, another one of it all is that many of our friends and family basically do have certain expectations about basically or unrealistic expectations based on what grieving is all about and so on and so forth of what it looks like because of the, these myths that's been going on and so on and so forth. As you know basically like as a side note basically just to be a mind before I continue basically some of these aren't exactly myths, some of them are pet peeves, some of them are also basically just things you shouldn't be saying to a person that's grieving. So basically, you've got to remember some of these myths that aren't going to be universally true today. So, so take it from a grain of shallot, so there's a very important distinction. So keep this in mind as you watch this, as well as after I put this on my blog, if you're interested, because it's going to be on my blog maybe later on in the week, if you'll read it, instead of maybe... Uh, person in the full screen here watching me. So some of them this will also be clustered by certain themes that I'm going to share with you today. He says number one grief has an end point. I'll hate to say this to guys out there. Sorry. This is forever going to be an ongoing thing. As I said grieving is just a normal natural human response for us humans even though as I said before that you know grieving for people will take effect on others more than some some might grieve in a different way some you may think that just judging by them they're not grieving at all they're just doing it in their own natural way this isn't a bad thing though just to be a mind though like it just means that when losing something or someone that we love basically deeply lost with us will in some way stay there forever grief may feel like different to others as I see basically it will become more manageable when years many years approaches but it'll always be there. So too bad people often make us feel like we should have reached the end point of our grieving process. Number two, once you're done grieving, life will return to normal. Again, this is not a hundred percent true. When it comes down to it basically, as I said before, you you'll still have that, you know, memories or your thoughts of your loved one that you lost. Yes, certain things may trigger you to just, you know, cry happy tears or whatever, or just find something that reminds you of them regardless. And I believe that in saying this that, you know, just take your time to grieve regardless because you know, you don't have to forever stop but then and I just got to remember also that there is a time that we have to try not move on, move on, but just move on and hopefully just try to get on with our everyday life regardless. And as we know, grieving takes time for many people. Some take many, many years, but like some people I've heard in the past, well, they shouldn't be wallowing too much in their grief. They should be moving on. They should be getting on with life and stuff and shouldn't be blah, blah, blah. That's fine and well, but then again, you've got to bear in mind that, you know, as I said before in the first one, there's no end point. People have to have their time to grieve in their own way. Before is the first year is the worst. I believe in some ways it can be the worst thing possible for us the grieving process you know because I believe in some ways it could be the first year it could be just maybe a few split seconds after like the starting of the grieving process has begun that it does happen you know the saying that sometimes you know give it time time will heal or what have you well I find that it can to a point heal but then that's up to us if we want to actually you know be healed from the grieving process or what have you but then again people think this is not 100% accurate anyways so therefore we just need to be in mind of that. And nope again neither of this is true either. There has, you can have your ups and downs, your good days and bad days and so on and so forth. No matter how much we wish it was grief 
isn't a straight line or straight path for us. And as again, the end point isn't always better. Number seven, if you are still talking about your loved ones after so many years, it means you're stuck. Not really. You're not stuck at, at that point. What I believe is in this one is basically if you're still talking about your loved ones after so many years, you're just cherishing the memories you've had. You know, you're just trying to not let go of the memories as such, just but reminiscing the memories that you had with them. You know, it's good just to have certain memories that comes into play and whatnot when it comes down to it. Number eight, if you still display photos of your loved one after a certain amount of years, it means you're stuck. Again, this goes hand in hand, as I said before, that it's okay to, you know, grow for a certain time frame. We, we can cherish the memories we had of our loved one. This doesn't mean you're stuck. You're just trying to reminiscence the memories that you had of your loved one. If you still cry when you think, talk about your loved one after years, it means you're stuck. No. 11. Women grieve more than men. Yes, okay, to a point, men don't, aren't all about emotions, as we know, but men might be grieving in their own unique way. They might be angry, they might be doing the five, you know, stages of grief that I mentioned, like in one of my videos, or they're just doing it in their dealing way, because many men struggle with their feelings, and I'm hoping that, you know, of this to actually abolish it completely men, men do need to show their feelings and emotions in one of the positive ways possible in their own way so on and so forth 13 you can only grieve a death no it's not necessarily true 14 you can't grieve something you never had obviously this is not always true but the gist of it is this may come off a little confusing for many of us that basically we grieve things we never had all the time. For example, if I always thought I would never have children, basically, then I learn I can't get pregnant. You know, that is a loss I will grieve on my own too. If I always imagined a future with a house or a husband or what have you looking a certain way that doesn't, then again I agree what I imagine it would be. You get the idea? Friends and family will always be the best support. Now and again, basically, some people may not have some friends or family to support them through their grieving process. Some people may grieve on their own. Doing it on their own terms and whatever, as I said before, grieving affects people in different ways. Grieving is a natural response as a human. It's okay to grieve in our own terms. Eek! This one gets a lot of gets people into a trouble a lot on this one. Just because someone also lost a child, spouse, a parent, a pet, whatever it may be. It doesn't mean your experience will be the same. Every experience will be different. They may not even be similar, just be in mind. Sometimes people with similar losses basically end up being your best support anyways. Sometimes if it's someone with a totally different kind of loss whom you may connect with, you just never know. So therefore basically you might have someone in a different path to actually make that connection. 17. Grief follows a similar path and timeline for everyone. Not necessarily true. 18. If you aren't crying, then you aren't grieving. This is one of the ones I mentioned in my last video of the missing misconceptions. That is one of my pet peeves, which I'll link at the i card above me. Because obviously, as we know, some of us ain't cries when it comes down to grieving or just cries at all to get over. Um... It doesn't mean there is something wrong with this. Like I said, it's a natural response. Number 19, if you aren't following the five stages of grief, it's a problem. Many people don't follow these five stages of the, you know, grieving process, as I mentioned, you know, each to their own. If they do, it's often not in order. Some may skip some of the steps of what they're going through. Repeat steps, you get the idea. This is just one theory about grief among many other theories that are out there. You aren't grieving wrong if your grief doesn't fit into that box or criteria. Number 20, the only grief theory is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross five stages because everyone knows it's act. not always, as I said before, it, it just basically, they don't follow an order of the grieving process, so therefore, you know, you go there. Grieving as a problem is number 21, hope is a natural reaction to lost, obviously, we will certainly go through it sometime in our life or we might go about it all the time in our life just because something is painful doesn't mean we should avoid it or ignore it so we just should be able to actually deal with it in our own time and tackle it in our own way how we go about it the goal of grief is to move on the goal to grief is to get over it. those are my pet peeves about get over it you know just give us time to grieve. be patient with the person that has lost someone and they're, they're grieving but be there listening near even if they don't want to talk and uh, about anything else but their loved one that they lost or whatever it may be. Before, the goal of grief is to find closure. Ah, the myth of closure. Hmm. Moving on and getting over it. Didn't we mention from the get-go that there's no end point? We never tie up our grief with a nice little bow and move on. 
as a little prison. He's a prison for me to use. It's just how is in it works. What we do learn, however, to carry it with us in a meaningful way and healthy way. We use it to continue a connection with the person we loved while moving forward. 25. Certain types of loss are inherently better or worse than other types of loss. Number 26. Young children don't grieve. I'm going to do hopefully a video about how to talk to your child about grieving or what have you in my next video hopefully soon in these grief and loss series. 27. Children should not attend funerals. That's wrong. The family, you know, and you need to support them as well as just supporting yourself. 28 is children are resilient. You don't need to worry about them. The good news is children certainly may look resilient. But the myth here is that it doesn't take effect or work or support. I want to someone, I wish I could remember who, dot dot dot, leave a comment if you know the source of this. Compare resiliency and children to children's ability to learn a language. It's much easier for children to learn languages than adults. But if this does not mean, however, they will learn that language. We don't teach, coach, and educate and support them. I always have liked this analogy, however. Research shows that childhood trauma can be caused through adulthood in countless ways, psychological and physical. We need to give the child the appropriate time, attention, and tools to cultivate that resiliency. 29. Nothing having a funeral will hinder your ability to grieve or find closure. You grieve less when you know in advance someone is going to die. Not necessarily true. It depends on how good your relationship was with that person. Some people might get over it in a short period of time. Again, it's based on maybe some of the experiences we go through. But if it's a traumatic kind of loss of death, so to speak, or just a trauma in some ways, or as I said, you know, losing a pet or whatever it may be of a different type of you know, loss that we lost. You grieve less when the person who died is older and lived a long fulfilled life. Not always true, you know, it can happen any time. Your grief is easier when someone was suffering because you are relieved when they aren't suffering anymore. Not necessarily true on that one either. When someone dies by suicide it's their own fault although we're selfish. Okay, this one has really irked me to the point now about this one because obviously I've lost a few friends along the way through suicide and it's not being selfish. It was their way of trying to just relieve the pain that they were feeling. I know it may, may not seem it at the time but we need to know the warning signs when it comes down to them being depressed and well, suicidal thoughts or whatever they're going through in their life, so to speak. And I think I've done one about, about this a bit more on the suicide. I'll find that and link in a now. I can't put me in, in the description for you guys to have a look at to what I'm sharing here. If not, I'll do a quick video on this. When someone has a miscarriage, it was likely brought on by not taking out care of themselves, stress taking birth control, lifting something heavy or some other ridiculous myth. You never know, some, some mothers-to-be may be good at looking after themselves and by nature that miscarriages happen for when the ones that wants to carry a child. So, no, people don't grieve after miscarriage in the same way they grieve other deaths. Again, that's wrong. They'll probably will grieve in a similar fashion like anyone else. If something helped you while you're grieving, it will be helpful to most other people who are grieving. To a point, that can be true, but not quite. Because obviously, if what I'm on, I've learned basically in this, like, every grieving process is different, as I said before. And then, um, it's just each to their own, again, in their way of grieving. Keeping a journal always helps, not necessarily. Some people may find some other coping methods for grieving. So I want to comment here before I continue. What are your coping methods while you're grieving and after your grieving process? You felt it has, is still there, you know, to remember your loved ones. How do you go about it? Your coping methods. I'll share some of the ones of my coping methods, hopefully in one of my videos in the next few series over on this grief and loss topic. Going to therapy or support group is always helpful. Art therapy basically always help music therapy always helps etc etc you can get a prescription that will help your grief nope but wouldn't that be nice if there was a magic pill that we can swallow and just basically to cure the grief and loss process now if it's true that grief can exaggerate other underlying mental health issues though or conditions like depression and anxiety however those are the things that absolutely can be treated with medication so be on the lookout basically while the person that is grieving for their loss that they're not going down the path of depression, anxiety, so on and so forth. Basically be there for them. It's important if you're struggling basically I suggest also for yourself seek a pro medical professionals to have some form of medical advice in advance. 
once you get through all the first, like your first birthday, first anniversary, first holiday season, etc, etc, they will get easier for you. Grieving and mourning are the same thing. Wrong. Grieving and mourning means two different things. 44, just because someone looks okay when they are grieving, it means they feel okay. Not always present true. They might feel something in the inside than the outside. You lose a spouse. If you haven't started dating after a certain amount of years after losing your spouse, it means you're stuck. Again, not necessarily true. After losing your spouse, you need to start dating in order to move on. Not always 100% true. Maybe some people just feel that they don't want to be dating again. They don't want to have another partner. You know, each to their own when it comes down to this one. 47. After the death of a child, having another child, child will lessen the growth. Not necessarily true. It could probably pain the person that who has lost the child through miscarriage or whatever turmoil it was through that grieving process. So therefore, they decide to basically maybe not want to do it. 48. Being reminded that your loved one wouldn't want you to be sad is helpful not 100% true the best thing you can do is say something comforting positive or optimistic to agree with I have shared basically some parts on how, what you can say and do and what you shouldn't say and do in one of my videos which I'll link in the icon also and below me hopefully in the description grief is the same as sadness don't get me wrong sadness is a part of grief but grief and sadness ain't always the same thing as I said before but the other words grief is so much more than sadness for so many reasons grief is the same as depression wrong. Grief is a single emotion. No, we've got more emotions than just grief. Once someone dies, you can no longer have a relationship with them. 100% true. When someone dies, you will always feel their presence if you are tuned to it. If you have faith in God, it will lessen your grief. Some people may just turn away from their relations, regardless if it's a God or what have you. Some might just have that anger and then they'll, you know, swear and cuss and whatever in the midst of it at all. Grief is ultimately always a transformative and positive experience that will eventually make you a better person. Okay, this one is not me being a negative Nancy or what have you. Sometimes grief really is positive and transformative and we can reflect on the, all the ways it has made us a better person. That's a wonderful and amazing thing when it does happen. That being said though, however, not everyone finds or embraces the transformation in grief. 57, you cannot grieve someone who is still alive. That's that's not always true. People like faith leaders, teachers, doctors and counsellors all have training in growth and understand what you're going through. Not always 100% true. Sadly, many professionals listed above does require training or no formal training in grief. None, zero, zip, nada. Doctors, nope, not required. Counsellors, unless they are specialising in, in the grief, you know, department. Usually not required for them either. Scary, we know. If you avoid grief and keep a stiff, a stiff upper lip, it will eventually go away. For a widow or widower has photographs of their late husband and wife up around their house, it means they aren't ready to get involved in a new relationship. Not 100% true. When kids are involved, it's important to stay strong and focus all your attention on their grief. Not always true because obviously there is a healthier way to deal with it, as I said. There's you too. God never gave us more than what, what we can hand. Again, there can be a bit of a myth there. After a death, you will always feel a rush of strong emotions. Each to their own, maybe. Not all people, but some might. Eventually, you will stop noticing and or being affected by grief triggers. Not always 100% true because obviously, you know, there will be some triggers that will trigger our grief period also. Also, in saying this, don't forget that I have got a merch store that I'm trying to hopefully add a bit more style designs in the next two months or so to hopefully help with extra funding along with the crowdfunding page of basically the patreon account for those of you who are new today patreon is like a sort of account for us creators be it music creators content creators that are doing and mental health or water form it is that they're using as a form of the platform on youtube twitch or wherever else they may likely to fly about basically a bit about giving back to you guys when you do support so if you feel to donate to me big or small no pressure basically but it'd be much appreciated if you did but hey this will cover my cost of my rent the travel when i do some more traveling with asb series or just traveling in general if i decide in the near future to meet you guys below down that i've got some projects in the works that i'm still hoping that if anyone wants to participate for project number one of the journey through the mind series that you may have seen lydia who was the first participant from life with lydia basically sharing her life story so i'm hoping to do short blurts of documentary style stories basically based on this and then saying basically if you want to be on the bandwagon in any way for that feel free to comment below as well and saying this the second project of it was supposed to be an icebreaker for you guys just to answer a series of questions and if you do decide to come back for the second part of that journey through the mind series to 
be a more depth storyline please feel free because I'm hoping later today it's, if all goes to plan and I'm hoping to maybe get someone on the side to maybe animate them heads up basically I was hoping in the works later today to do a second part of my book that I did based on my life of an Aspie looking through the life of Asperger's syndrome or something along those I'll link the link in the description below based on that as well so that if anyone of you that are maybe autistic and uh, from the autistic community group and you are interested in participating let me know so that maybe we can get the ball rolling and get the short stories done and up as well as a third part of my book series because I'm still thinking that there are certain topics I may have not touched base on from the first part of my book of the journey through life with Asperger's syndrome of mine and also this also I'm trying to keep my blog up to date so I can create it as a website hopefully as of before next year because that's my main goal I'm still looking for someone who is willing to actually maybe help me design it from WordPress to actually put the web address in and stuff and tidy it up so that we can actually put other bits and pieces in that you may want to see on there as I'm at this point of time been away for a few times too because of the subtitling I'm supposed to, I'm doing but I hopefully you enjoyed this video and do what you love love what you do until next time I'll see you again soon ciao for now